your forecast first. Sponsored by Natax Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Temperatures across the area tonight have been holding very steady into the low 40s uh, here and through much of this evening. 39 in Springfield. We are actually watching the satellite radar for a little bit of rain up here to the north in Iowa. This is going to cruise across northern Illinois. Could clip some of our northern counties. A few sprinkles, but nothing major expected. Tomorrow, out the door in the morning, temperatures... Again, probably still just hanging there into the upper 30s and low 40s. Still a lot of cloud cover. We've got some active weather coming up here later this week. Thunderstorms and snow. We'll show it to you when we come back. WCI3 News starts right now. Now from WCIA3 News. As I'm laying on our basement floor, I hear this big boom. Some people say they keep hearing explosions in their village, and this time the bomb squad was called. Plus, in Champaign County, the last treasurer left under a cloud of controversy. Why the woman stepping into the office says she's the one to fix it. The mayor of Champaign has a new way to reach more people in the community. How you can do it just by picking up your smartphone. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 10. They're coming into the town, into the neighborhoods, and, you know, I am concerned. People in Catlin are still trying to figure out who's behind loud explosions they've been hearing. Good evening, I'm Paul Cicchini. And I'm Jessica Coons. This issue has not stopped since we first told you about it last month. The Vermilion County Sheriff's Department is investigating, but people hearing these loud booms are still looking for definitive answers. WCI3's Jamie Mays is live in our newsroom. So Jamie, when was the last time neighbors heard these? Some told me it happened just this week, and now they're concerned more about safety. It actually was right in the middle of the road here, um, and I didn't see any vehicles. By the time I came outside, I saw enough of the smoke funneling away from the general area. Neighbors say they heard an explosion Sunday evening. What we think happened is they drove by and tossed something out here. The next night, a few blocks away near the high school, another boom. And went down to our basement to kind of finish a workout and as I'm laying on our basement floor I hear this big boom and it rattled the windows it I mean my daughter starts shaking you know the dog goes crazy the University of Illinois Police Department and the Champaign Police Department's bomb squads were asked to go to Vermilion County to assist U of I Police Department's interim chief of police says they picked up a small item and secured it they could not provide specific details about what was recovered this is a small community you know you would think by now that somebody would know something or have seen something um, and it's just kind of scary. Neighbors say this has been going on in Catlin for a while. In February, Vermilion County Sheriff's Office said they were trying to figure out if the sound was from Tannerite. That's used for long distance target shooting. Neighbors are wondering when this will end. Hopefully it just stops. Um, maybe it would take someone getting caught, getting in trouble. I really hope it doesn't take someone getting hurt. I reached out to Vermilion County Sheriff's Office several times about the investigation. I have not heard back from them yet. Live in the newsroom, Jamie Mays, WCIA 3, your local news leader. Now those neighbors want answers and you can't blame them. Jamie, thank you. The U of I Police Department says the item they recovered this week from the street was about the size of an M80. That's a small firecracker. Nine barns in Macoupin County have caught fire in over a month. The sheriff thinks a serial arsonist is responsible. The first happened in late January in Gillespie. Several others have happened near Carlinville. Most have one thing in common. They had hay in them. So far, the only person who's been hurt has been a firefighter. But some are worried it won't stay that way. Scared. Um, you know, people that live out in the country, and, and rightfully so, um, they're wondering if they're next, and they're wondering if it's going to escalate to structures with possibly people in them. The only lead they have is a white Ford pickup with a wooden tailgate, but they haven't found it. We have new information about an investigation into a possible police impersonator. The man's a private investigator. We told you yesterday the Champaign County Sheriff's Office is, uh, started investigating rather after a man was caught on a doorbell camera with a badge. Happened in Tolono. They couldn't identify the agency for which he worked. Today, they told us they reached the man and say he is a private investigator who was serving a summons. The mayor of Champaign is taking a different approach to get information to her community. Deb Finan started a podcast to discuss issues facing the city or other important topics. She says city staff came up with the idea. The first episode was on the census. She says it's another way to communicate with the community.
I also think the benefit is that it's a longer conversation. I could give you a, you know, 30 second soundbite about census, but that doesn't answer the broader questions about how it's going to work and, you know, what the implications are for the community. In the podcast, we have the time to have that discussion. She says they're aiming for one podcast a month. Future topics include the Adopt a Drain program and the Illinois Marathon. We have an update from six. Champaign County's new treasurer addressed the county board tonight. Marisol Hughes has a bachelor's degree in accounting and a master's in auditing. She's from Ecuador and has lived in Champaign County for the past few years. Laurel Pressing left the treasurer's office at the end of January, leaving behind an office with a backlog of work and unreconciled accounts. But Hughes says she's looking forward to taking on the job. I have extensive administrative experience, experience as well, guiding efforts to identify opportunities for financial assistance and investment. The county board chairman says Hughes will resume responsibility until the end of the year. She'll be on the ballot to run for treasurer in the November election, and the Republican Party can choose someone to run against her. Another programming error at the Secretary of State's office is affecting voters one week before the primary election. This time, automatic voter registration denied valid voters their registration. State Board of Elections sent a letter to county clerks. It said a group of Real ID applicants was categorized as opting out of registration because of the error. More than 1,000 people were accidentally denied in 87 of the state's 108 election jurisdictions. There was also an error for application dates, which would have made it impossible for clerks to know if voters registered before the deadline. Now from your local election headquarters, the Illinois primary election, of course, one week from tonight. And while the race for president is down to two primary candidates, there are several important races down ballot. Our Capitol Bureau Chief Mark Maxwell hit the campaign trail to catch up with Republicans running to unseat Senator Dick Durbin in the fall. Five Republicans want to challenge Senator Dick Durbin's seat in November. He's been there 38 years. He's tired and, and, and has forgotten where he came from. I think there is a certain degree of, of Durbin fatigue. They face off next Tuesday in a primary battle. Only two candidates have had much experience wooing donors and building support. And only one candidate won the endorsement primary. We're in good shape. Racking up endorsements from all three newspapers in the Chicagoland area. Well, it is his backyard. And that's why he's endorsed by the Sun-Times and by the Chicago Tribune, that he's got the name recognition up here. If you look at the newspapers that covered the race up here, they, none of them even mention his name. They don't even view him as a credible candidate. Tuesday morning, Dr. Tom Tartar campaigned at a veterans meeting at a Dunkin' Donuts in Niles. People talk about the dreamers. I'm going to recommend that the 900 who served in the U.S. military have an immediate pathway to citizenship. We caught up with former Lake County Sheriff Mark Curran holding a private fundraiser Tuesday night in downtown Chicago. You look at single-payer health care, and what is that other than taking away our liberty, our freedom, and, uh, you know, I'm there to fight for all of that. Like most GOP primaries in the modern era, this Republican race includes a key threshold question. How loyal are you to President Trump? I l love what Donald Trump has done. Mark Curran uh, is... <laughs> is not fully behind the president. Well, I would not have voted to impeach, and I, you know, the comparisons between me and Mitt Romney are not fair. First of all, Mitt Romney, um, I, I, Mitt Romney is weak. Whichever of these Republican candidates clinches their party's nomination next Tuesday will inherit a tall order trying to raise enough money and build enough support statewide to topple the second most powerful Democrat in the U.S. Senate. And to be sure, Senator Dick Durbin will not go down without a fight. But that's a fight these Republicans are itching for, and one they think they can win. Reporting in Chicago, Mark Maxwell. Another Republican candidate, Peggy Hubbard, was campaigning in Quincy tonight. You can watch more of our election coverage on WCIA.com. MTD tries to keep its buses clean while it's now stepping up its game. Plus, some university classes have to be done online. Why that could be the future for many more of them. And the Blue Devils haven't lost a game all season. Why they didn't plan on starting tonight.